Call to order. This is the 19th regular meeting of the 2009-2010 Common Council. And as is customary, our city clerk, Sue Richards, will give us the quote of the evening. Thank you, Mayor. Be always at war with your vices, at peace with your neighbors, and let each new year find you a better person. Thank you, Sue. Roll call, please. Warren? Here. Falk? Here. Bowers? Here. Decker? Here. Kisha? Here. Hannah? Here. Heidemann? Here. Koth? Here. Kittleson? Excused? Clayunas? Here. Montemayor? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Surik? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Vu? Here. And Wangaman? Here. 15 present. We have a quorum. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Alderman Bowers this evening. For approval of the minutes of the prior council meeting. So moved. We have a motion and a second under discussion. All in favor of approval say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, confirmation of mayor's appointments. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Henry Nelson to be considered for appointment to the library board to fill the unexpired term of Marilyn Taple, whose term expires 4-30-2011. Signed by the mayor. Your Honor, I move that the appointment be confirmed. Second. We have a motion to confirm the appointment under discussion. No discussion. Roll call, please. Boren? Aye. Falk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. And Wangaman? Aye. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. We have no public forum this evening. Moving down to mayor's announcements. First of all, I'd like to welcome back Alderperson Jean Clyunas. We've missed her over the last uh, several weeks. I missed you too. So, <laughs> welcome back, Jean. Thank you very much. Um, otherwise, under mayor's announcements, uh, we're talking trash here, which is garbage pickup. Um, as we all know, there's been some, uh, there, there are some changes um, in 2010 in, in garbage pickup, there is no recycling calendar this year. So if you don't, you don't have to look for a recycling calendar and you no longer have to stick your head out and look down the block and check what your neighbor's putting out to figure out what you're putting out. At least that's what I always did. Um, right now you can put out your blue bag items and your paper items every week on collection. You can put out the, you, if you have a small amount of paper items, you can put them in with your blue bag items. So you can have your plastic, your cans, and your cardboard all in your blue bag, or you can still put out the cardboard separately. In other words, bundle it together, or if you have enough to fill a thin box, you can put it all in one box. Um, so, so we'll no longer have to worry about what is, blue bag, what is blue bag week, what is cardboard week. It now can all go out at the same time. It can go in the blue bag, or it can go, the cardboard can go separately. Recyclables, plastic, cans, etc., still need to go in a clear blue bag. That hasn't changed. Um, on the other hand, on your garbage, the non-recyclables, we will no longer require that you have clear trash bags, mainly because uh, it's hard to find clear trash bags. Initially, it was you needed a clear bag. You couldn't use an opaque bag. Now there's no such thing as clear bags, really. Everybody's gone to white bags. Now you can use any color bag you'd like, uh, including the, the big green or black hefty bags. Um, however, we still are recycling. We still are separating the trash. But it, it, it's so difficult to find clear bags, especially clear bags that will actually hold garbage, um, that we think this is the better move and we'll, uh, we'll keep more trash in the bags and less trash on the streets. Um, also, some residents will have their day of collection changed. All of these homes were notified by a door hanger hanging on the front door. It's certain blocks, certain areas have changed. 
most, I, I believe it's 3,900 households in total uh, have, have changed the day of pickup. Um, rather than notifying the whole city that everybody, the days of pickup have changed, most people are not changing. So um, if you have a hanger on your door, your day has changed. Obviously, if your day has changed, so has your neighbors. So if, uh, you know, if people can communicate with their neighbors, if you know the day has changed, if you see your neighbor is putting out their trash on the wrong day, please do so. You know, some people, uh, you know, their, their hanger may have blown off their door or they didn't understand it. If people can communicate to their neighbors, it will make everything uh, run much more smoothly. Also, everything, all of the rules and the uh, regulations can be viewed on the city website, which is www.cisheboygan.wi.us. I believe uh, Alder Person Clayunas had his question. Thank you, Your Honor. I don't want to confuse it. So uh, there was a question asked by one of my constituents. So paper goods do not have to be put in a blue bag. Paper goods do not they have can be to be handled put in the way the same bag. way they, they can were be done. bundled together or put, yeah. you know, the okay. way they always were. They do not need to Great. be put in a blue bag. But if you choose to put them in a blue bag, you got room in your blue bag, you can put them in with yeah. your blue bag. Okay, thank you very much. Any other questions on this? Okay, thank you, everybody. Moving on to the consent, consent agenda, President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and file all reports of officers, accept and adopt all reports of committees, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. This is 19-1 all the way to 19-3 today <laughs> on the consent agenda. Under discussion? No discussion. Roll call, please. Falk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koff? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 19-4 to be referred. Reports of officers 2, 19-5 through 19-9 to be referred. If everybody can make a note on 19-8, um, that will not be referred to the library board. That will be referred to public works on 19-8. Resolution introduced three, 19 dash 10 lies over. Um, 1911 and 19. Wait on somewhere. Alderman Board? Uh, on 1911. Okay. Finish. Uh, 1911 and 1912 to be referred. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, I'd ask for suspension of the rules on 1911. Seven. Have a motion and a second to spend, suspend the rules on 1911 under discussion. Under discussion, uh, Mayor Ryan, uh, the, uh, time of the essence is on this study. Uh, for the people watching at home, this is a resolution directing the Director of Public Works and the Finance Director <coughs> to do a comprehensive study, cost benefit analysis, and feasibility study of bringing all city vehicle maintenance under one roof. And then it goes on to list some dates. And the reason it's a time of time is of the essence on this is that I'd like the like the report to go to the finance committee on February 22nd, and the public works committee on February 25th. So uh, that's why I'm asking for suspension because time of is, is of the essence to get going on this study. Very good. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Any opposition to suspending the rules? There is none. The rules are suspended. So we will, this will, Alderman Board. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I make a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. <coughs> we have a motion and a second under discussion on putting it upon its passage. Under discussion uh, for the benefit of the council and the audience, uh, the second whereas, where it says, whereas the city of Sheboygan currently spends, and I left that blank because I didn't have the information when I had to get that into City Clerk Richards, uh, I got a, an email from uh, the, finance, the finance director, Terry Hansen, uh, stating that we spend approximately $2.7 million on vehicle maintenance costs, labor, parts, repairs, and maintenance fuels. So if you want to fill in that figure and that whereas, that's how much we're 
currently spending. And that figure was? $2.7 million. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Alderman Barn. Any further discussion? Need a roll call on that? Sure. Roll call, please. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Hayden, Koth, Cleunis, Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Surik, Vanderweel, Vu, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Boren, Aye. and Bauk. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1912 is referred. Matters laid over 11. 18 35, resolution number 145 09 10 by Alderperson Kittleson, extending the listing on the Little Red Schoolhouse at 1116 Huron Avenue from April 2009 through March 31st, 2010. We need a motion. Alderperson Kittleson is not here. President Kisha. Thank you. On behalf of Alderperson Kittleson, I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion? Alderperson Clayonis. Thank you, Your Honor. Did the deal fall through? I understood that we had an offer for this. And uh, yes, we do have a pending offer on it. However, the, uh, the individuals that have uh, put in the offer uh, have not secured financing at okay. this point. Thank you. Any further discussion? There is none. Roll call, please. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Clayunis? Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik, Vanderweel, Aye. Vu, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Boren, Aye. Bauk, Aye. and Bowers. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 18-36, resolution number 146-09-10 by Alderpersons Gisha, Clayunas, Boren, Montemayor, and Heidemann, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2009 budget, establishing revenue and appropriations for donation received for police canine. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Have a motion and a second under discussion. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this is an amount of $7,000 that's been donated to the city to uh, acquire an additional canine dog, which includes not only acquiring the dog, but the special training that goes along with it. I believe they do it in Mexico, and this will cover that expense as well and allow the city to expand its use of canine uh, via donation. And again, we always get to the point where does that person want their name mentioned or not? It was not mentioned in committee, but perhaps on behalf of the city, uh, we could. Thank um, you. Yes, and actually, I've spoken to that individual, and he uh, he he has said that I could mention his name. Very good. Um, this is my counterpart out in uh, in the Black River area. The honorary mayor of Black River, known as uh, Fritz Rommer, <laughs> has donated the money for this for this canine. So, we thank uh, thank Fritz, even though he's not a city resident. Um, if he would like to. Uh, to uh, voluntarily annex his property into the city, we definitely would like to have him. So thank you again to Fritz. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? There is none. Roll call, please. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. And Decker? 15 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law. 19-13, an RC by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operator's license application number 8463 based upon the applicant's failure to include all relevant convictions on the application, the record of violations related to the licensed activity, and the applicant's ineligibility for the license due to multiple convictions directly related to the licensed activity. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. We have a motion and a second <coughs> under discussion. Under discussion, Mayor, is Joshua Kavasik here tonight? He's here, He's here, Mayor. Uh, before we call up Mr. Kavasik, I'd like to proceed. Uh, first, I'll read the comments that I got from uh, the Deputy City Attorney at last week's uh, uh, law and licensing meeting, and Mr. Kavasik did attend. Uh, Mr. Kavasik, uh, revealed traffic tickets in 2005 and 2008, Mr. Mi misdemeanor drug possession convictions, he should have revealed the following. Now, this was not in his application and it should have been. Drug possession 2005, uh, open burning 2005, 
underage alcohol 2005, under, another underage alcohol in 2005, and drug possession 2008. Uh, these are, these uh, 2005 convictions are related, uh, directly related to the license activity and therefore make him ineligible for a license at this time. According to the deputy city attorney, when some of these 2005 convictions go off, then he would be eligible for a license, but he will not be eligible until 2015, and therefore the committee voted unanimously to deny the license. Mr. Kovacic, would you like to speak? Come to the front, please. We need somebody to motion to open the floor, I believe. Motion to open the floor. Second. Motion to second. Anybody opposed to opening the floor? Please. If you can pull the microphone towards you a bit. So. All right. People hear me? Yep. Okay. Please. Um, jo Joshua, how do you spell your last name? K O V A. C-I-C-H. Oh, I had it right. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, the only things that I didn't include on my application was the two underage drinkings from 2005. And I am no, I'm 22 now, and I just didn't even think about my underage drinkings anymore when I was filling out my application. I did include my two possession and paraphernalia charges for THC. They were included on my application. It was just the two underage drinkings and an open burning. And the open burning, again, I just forgot all about and it wasn't exactly relevant to the case, but yeah, I, I just, I forgot all about my underage drinkings and it's never gonna happen again, obviously, I'm 22 years old and my, the bar that I'm trying to get the license for, uh, my mother is actually the manager of the bar and is there almost every night until at least 10 o'clock anyway, because she's cooking. And they're trying to hire, they want me to become the closing bartender. So I'd really only be left alone from 10 to two uh, most nights, but I mean, yeah. And I've got I've got a three and a half year old child, which I need the job to pay child support for. And I'd, yeah, really like the opportunity to a license. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Kvasic? Alderman Renflesh. Um, Just a moment here. Looking for you. There you go. Okay. Thank you. Um, just to reiterate, the, um, from the assistant city attorney, made the statement uh, in your committee, I'm assuming, again, that actually because of the convictions, he's ineligible, that even if we decided to uh, grant the license, we really can't, and that's the state that's telling us that we can't due to the nature of the convictions. Okay, thank you. Uh, attorney McLean. Yeah, uh, uh, thank you, Your Honor. That's not my opinion. Uh, okay. While it might have multiple convictions that relate to the substantially relate to the license activity, that does not statutorily or categorically make them ineligible for the license. It uh, gives you authorization and uh, valid justification to deny the license, but it doesn't uh, in and of itself make them ineligible. Um, if, if, I, if I may ask Mr. Kovacic, um, I believe uh, Alderman Boren said that you did not include these uh, um, Possession in in 08 and in 0, you you were convicted of possession in 08 and 05. And are you saying you did include those I, on your application? I did include my my drug charges. Yes, I know for a fact I did. Because I actually, yeah, I asked, and because actually earlier that day I just got turned down for an apartment for that same charge. And I specifically asked for, or stated that I had two charges for possession. So what, what you're stating is the underage drinkings was were not the, included. That yes, was an oversight was on your part in the open and burning? Open burning, yes. Which I don't think open burning would make you ineligible for much, but. Um, Alderman Board. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. <clears throat> uh, it's been the policy, it's been the policy of the committee since I've been chairman is that when there are, when there are uh, multiple uh, convictions that are related to the to the license activity that the the committee has not has not granted the license. Uh, not having a license does not preclude Mr. Kovacic from working. He can still work, except that he can't work alone and he can't uh, he can't uh, close the premises. But he, he still can work without a license. Uh, one thing I also should point out is that a Madam City Clerk's staff uh, makes it 
as clear as possible when people fill out these applications that they have to include all of their all of their uh, convictions. Uh, and he should have done it, and he didn't include it. And it's it's very clear that he should have uh, when they go through the application process. Mr. Kovacic. I included the fact that I had a DUI and drug charges. I mean, an underage drinking is such a minute thing. I wouldn't try and hide, like I really didn't try and hide it. I wasn't trying to pull a fast one and be like, I hope they don't catch me for these underage drinkings. I mean, I, I got a DUI last December and I included that. And I think that's a, a lot worse than a little underage drinking that happened back in 2005. Thank you. Um, first we have Alder Person Mount to Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, it's kind of important underage drinking. However, however, uh, I cannot deny you a job for misdemeanors when it isn't required that we deny you a job. Jobs are very hard to come by now. So I personally am not going to deny you the job. Thank you. Thank you, Alder Person Mount to Mayor. Now we have Alderman Bowers. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, if I understood you uh, correctly, uh, Alderman Bourne, he's not eligible for a uh, bartender's license till 2015? Uh, that's, that's the opinion of our, uh, the interpretation of the, I'm sorry, that's the, uh, that's the opinion of the Assistant City Attorney, and that's our, our legal counsel uh, for the committee. Well, apparently this is a uh, state statute. No. No. No? Um, as, as, uh, uh, Alder Person Boren stated earlier that uh, uh, basically the uh, uh, policy of, of his committee, law and licensing, that uh, that he would not be eligible until those were those came off of his record. Correct, Alderman Boren? That's the opinion of uh, Deputy Attorney uh, Adams. Okay. Attorney McLean? Yeah, where the 10 years comes in, uh, Alderman Bowers, is the application asked for convictions in the last 10 years. So in 10 years from 2005, those would drop off and therefore you wouldn't have to uh, provide those in your application. But it's my opinion that those convictions in and of themselves under the statute does not preclude you from granting the license. The, the, the issue is uh, are you discriminating based on arrest or conviction record by denying the license if there are uh, multiple violations related to the license activity and the answer to that is no, you're not discriminating. So you have the, the legal right to deny the license if you determine that there are multiple violations that relate substantially to the license activity. And I think underage alcohol consumption does relate to the license activity and I understand that the, at least one of the drug possession charges was uh, uh, related to or at least stopped after leaving a tavern which I think relates to the license activity so I think if you deny the license you're within your rights to do that. Were any of these? Think, I'm sorry. Uh, he's not I don't think you can say from a legal standpoint that he's ineligible for a license. That's not a fair statement, in my opinion. Are any of these felonies that he has in his record? No. Misdemeanors? No. The misdemeanors. Okay. No, the, Actually, the drug possession not. charges are misdemeanors, and the underage alcohol and the open burning are ordinance violations. Thank you. Both are actually brought to uh, city ordinance violations. They're not actually the misdemeanors. Co county ordinance violations at the All time. Right. Uh, Alderman Bow. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. <clears throat> you look like a decent kid, and I'm going to call you a kid because you're 22 years old. And I want to give you the benefit of the doubt. So help us understand, a year ago, one year ago, after growing up and having two underage uh, offenses, you got to be kidding me that you don't think those are serious. No, it's and not. And 12 months ago, you got behind the wheel of a car and drove around my town where my kids play, and you want me to give you a liquor license? you got to help me understand why anyone would think that's a good idea. Lay it on me, brother. What change has happened in your life in the past year? You want me to give you a liquor license. Well, I obviously lost my license. I lost my job. But at the same time, I lost my license. I had a great job, and I wasn't. And my DUI, I wasn't. It was 
I slipped on some black ice, my truck slid out and it uh, wound up rolling one and a half times and me and my roommate at the time actually both walked out, we were wearing seat belts, my truck was totaled, me and him both walked out with a scratch on us. Since that time, I, it took me almost an entire year to find a new job. I had no vehicle. My parents have been getting a divorce. I've been, I've had to do so many things like to get my son back in my life. Since I lost my job, I wasn't paying child support. And me and her got in a big whole mess. I've, I've seen the light. I mean, I don't drink. I've, I've been taking a taxi now. I've just started going back out now that I've been getting a little bit of money in my pocket. Me and my girlfriend have been going out. And I've been taking a taxi the whole time. I, now that I had that DUI, I will not drink and drive. I, I came this close to losing my life. I flipped, it was right on the overpass. I was leaving uh, at the tavern and I left and I was going down Indiana and I crossed over uh, 43, 43, I think that is right there. And I almost fell over the overpass. I, me and my roommate almost lost my life because I slipped on some black ice. I mean, the underage drinkings are obviously wrong, and it's not a good thing. I'm not trying to say that they're nothing. It's just that I wasn't trying to pull a fast one over anybody. I wasn't trying to do anything. I, it's a job. I've got a kid I'm trying to support here. I'm not just trying to do whatever. I mean, seriously. Thanks. So, Mr. Mayor, I, I, would add, I would urge my colleagues here to, I would urge your family to find somebody who doesn't have a drinking uh, three drinking issues in the past five years. Hire them to close the bar down. You get a job in something that doesn't involve alcohol for four or five years. Prove that your uh, Wisconsin's permissive DUI laws are crazy. I urge my colleagues to, unfortunately, you got a lot of unfortunate circumstances. They're all results of choices you've made, my friend. Uh, and I'd urge you to change your life in a different way that doesn't involve alcohol. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Buck. We have <coughs> Alderman Hanna. Find a job. It's, it's hard. It's you get a hard Mr. Kovacic, if you could just hold off for a second, Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. May I ask Alderman Bourne a question? Uh, had all these items been disclosed to your committee, and they weren't, but had they, how would your committee have voted? Uh, they, th we, I would have, uh, I would have, uh, I, uh, f based on past experience, because they're related to the license activities, I don't, I don't believe we would have, uh, that was an issue that they weren't disclosed, but uh, when they were disclosed, I, I don't think that would have changed the vote of the committee. And I, I also want to mention that our, uh, our p police liaison to the, uh, uh, to the committee, Lieutenant Scott Middlestat, also, when I asked him for his comments, uh, was not in favor of uh, Mr. Kavasi getting a license. And I also, since that time, uh, have gotten a communication from Lieutenant Middlestat. There are, there are at least four other incidents that should have been on the application that weren't on the application that even a, Attorney Adams was not, a, was not a, apparently was not aware of that. Go back to November of 04, and uh, November of 04 was another possession of marijuana, and that our committee was not even made available. Uh, we weren't even advised of that one, and there's three other ones which I won't go into. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Do you have anything else to say? Uh, that's ridiculous. I've only had two of them my entire... I don't have three charges. Okay. I, uh, Mr. Kovacic, I, I, uh, I thank you for coming up. It does take a lot of guts to get up before this committee and, uh, and state your case. Um, you know, I mean, it's, uh, we have our, our, our committees uh, for reasons that everything is not heard in front of the council chambers. You know, the I do appreciate who, you coming up this evening. It, it takes a lot of guts to stand here in, in front of everybody. You know, the guys who came before me in the, when I had my first meeting, he got busted for heroin, and he, and he got granted a license. I got underage drinking, okay. and I'm not getting a license. Well, it's up, to, it's up to the committee now to vote on it, so if you can sit down, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, um, we have a motion and a second uh, to deny the license, and I vote will deny the license. A no vote will not approve the license, however, it will not deny the license. Correct? Mm -hmm. Roll call, please. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Montemayor? No. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. 
Boren? Aye. Falk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. And Gisha? Aye. 14 ayes, one no. Motion carries. 19 14, in RC by law and licensing, re recommending granting various licenses. Alderman Boren? Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion? If there is no discussion, roll call, please. Heideman? Aye. Koth? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Falk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. And Hannah? 15 ayes. Motion carries 19-15, a resolution by Alderman Gisha authorizing the assistant city attorney to enter into a payment plan on behalf of the city with Charles and Lipping Farrell for the payment of past due room tax. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Uh, everyone should have had, thank you, Your Honor, everyone should have had a uh, corrected copy correcting a few typos and top of your other matters, packets. Um, there's a debt owed the city. It's not general fund money, it's tourism money. Um, and a payment plan has been worked out of a very difficult situation. And I'd be happy to answer any additional questions. Very good, thank you, President Kisha. Any further discussion? Alderman Bourne? Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, I was wondering if anybody knows uh, this uh, running tab of eleven thousand seven hundred eleven dollars and fifty six cents. Is that uh, is that owed for like a quarter, or a half a year, or a year? And then also, my other question is, uh, who's kind of like mining the store on these? As far as you know, any of these these uh, uh, these uh, fees getting out of hand? Um, Thank you. As far as, far as uh, you know, this, this was dealing with one, uh, one hotel in town which is no longer open. Right. Uh, I do not know the period on this. Perhaps Attorney McLean knows. I know that this is, uh, this is followed on a, a regular basis. Attorney McLean, would you like to answer Alderman Boren's question? I can answer part of it. Uh, um, I don't know specifically what period of time that this uh, delinquency covers Alderman Boren, but it does cover taxes plus penalty and interest that is provided by uh, ordinance and the uh, state law. Um, the other part of your question was? Who's, who's minding the uh, oh, for? Uh, the, all the uh, motels and hotels are required to submit quarterly uh, room tax returns, in effect, to the finance department and uh, if they don't report or they don't pay the tax that's owing uh, after a period of time determined by the finance department, they contact us and ask us to pursue collection. And uh, I'd say typically it's maybe at most two quarters that they're delinquent before our office gets involved. And, and normally on these two, most of your uh, hotels in town also are dealing uh, somewhat with the redevelopment authority also um, on, on different monies and they're also uh, uh, followed any delinquencies through there also. So. Alderman Bowers. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I, I'm looking at the old agreement, but the new agreement is for the same amount of money? Yes. Yes. The. Uh, but the difference is, uh, Alderman Bowers, the old one in the, the written amount of the dollar amount was 23480 So that was incorrect. So that's, that was the correction. All right. Now, have they made the $3,000 payment? Uh, I see that it calls for them to make that today. I don't know if they did or not today. Today is the first business day of the calendar year. This is sort of an unusual agreement because $3,000 is due today, $50 per, per month, and then the balance is due December 31st. Uh, well, $50 a month isn't very much. Well, if I can address that, uh, as the mayor mentioned 
redevelopment authority has some involvement with this, uh, not directly with the room tax payment, but uh, uh, had an issue with the, a delinquency by the ferals as well. The redevelopment authority had lent the ferals, um, I think it was $225,000 as a business development loan that was delinquent. Um, and we sued the Farrells because they had given a personal guarantee on the note, and we got a default judgment on that. Uh, I'm aware that uh, at the time we filed the uh, complaint, the Farrells came in to my office when we were still across the street, and that day when they came in, uh, Mr. Farrell had just been laid off at Kohler Company where he had been employed for significant number of years. Uh, you know, uh, they've had the hotel foreclosed on. The bank now owns the hotel. Uh, I believe they're no longer residing where they, they had owned a condominium in Sheboygan Falls or the town of Sheboygan. Uh, so the situation is they don't have a lot of income coming in, put it that way. And so it's... So this is more or less a, a hope agreement that they come up. Uh, we're giving them essentially 12 months to come up with some $20,000. Well, and even there, if you look at paragraph 4, if they don't come up with it at the end of 2010, the parties uh, may enter into a subsequent agreement to renegotiate the deal. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, if I may, I mean, in this situation, uh, this is a couple that... Uh, um, you know, uh, we're entrepreneurial, tried to uh, revive an old hotel in town, uh, stuck their necks out, and uh, it didn't, didn't work for them. Uh, since then, the economy's crashed. Obviously, the uh, uh, hotel trade is off by some 40% uh, nationwide. The entire industry is. Um, any agreement that we can make with these folks that they're making an effort to pay, pay this back, I think, in my opinion, is a good thing. President Gisher. I uh, just wanted to clarify that the... Uh the loan on the uh, on the, the building was to a credit union, not a bank. <laughs> it's kind of a personal <laughs> issue there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I'll repeat that the loan was not to Johnson Bank. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Clayunis? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers, Aye. Decker, Aye. Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. and Koth. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 19-16 uh, will be referred to the City Plan Commission and Redevelopment Authority. Uh, other matters? Attorney McLean. Thank you, Mayor. 1917 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2010. June 30, 2011. That will be referred to law and licensing. 1918 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Bobby Dudley requesting a waiver from the sex offender residency ordinance restrictions. That will be referred to public protection and safety. 1919 is a communication from Brett Summers requesting a waiver from the sex offender residency ordinance restrictions. That will be referred to public protection and safety. 1920 is a resolution to authorize the proper city officials to prepare the necessary documents to pursue a potential acquisition of property. That will be referred to the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee. 1921 is a resolution authorizing an extension of the agreement for interim human resources and labor relations consulting services with HR Unlimited LLC. That will be referred to finance. 1922 is a resolution to authorize the transfer of appropriations in the 2009 budget. That will be referred to finance. 1923 is a resolution lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire three firefighter paramedics in the Sheboygan Fire Department. That lies over. For a motion to adjourn. Motion in a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? We are adjourned.